We're here walking along the dry, brushy hillsides of western Montana in search of answers to one of the most enduring questions in ornithology. Why are males so bright and females so dull? In coloration, of course, I'm talking about. Think about it. Cardinals that come to your feet are males bright red, females duller. Orioles, or here's a good example, buntings. The western lazuli bunting is the bird I'm trying to find here on this hillside. Eastern indigo bunting and painted bunting, all good examples where males are brightly colored, females more dull colored. Now we're going to meet with Dr. Eric Green at the University of Montana because he's been working on just this question. Hey, Eric. Oh, hey, Dick. All right. Thanks for meeting me. Show me some lazuli buntings. Sure. Or is it lazuli bunting? Oh, that's a perennial question that always comes up. Uh, like pileated and pileated? That's and... right. Tomatoes, tomatoes. Mm -hmm. They're named after lapis. How do you call this? Lazuli. La lazuli. lazuli. lazuli yeah. That's right. The gemstone. The males are really brightly colored. We're uh, right at the edge of a male's territory. You can hear him singing right over here. There's a bunch of males right That's around right. this area. That's right. We're uh, right at the edge of one male's territory. He's counter singing now with about three or four others. Amazing. The coloration, this raises this issue. Why are the males so brightly colored compared to coloration of the females? And, and, and when I ask this question, for example, to students, uh, the knee-jerk reaction is, well, females are dull because they have to sit on the nest and be safe from predators. But in a sense, this begs the question, why are the males so bright? Well, in part, the students are right. It's, oh. it's <laughs> you hate to hear that, don't you? Uh, one really interesting thing, if you think about it, most males that are bright, what do they do when they finish breeding? They molt and become Dull. a lot duller. So that's why we have confusing fall warblers and so forth. There's a, a trade-off. It's risky to be bright. You're more conspicuous to predators and so mm -hmm. forth. Mm -hmm. That's probably why the females are, are dull and inconspicuous, trying to hide their, the, from predators and, and conceal their nests and so forth. Uh, the fact that males are bright and then molt and become dull after the breeding season really suggests that being bright it's got to have something to do with the breeding that, That's right, reproduction, sex and reproduction. What's going on in the breeding season that would be advantageous for the males to be Well, so bright? As, as, as we're hearing right here, we've got males competing intensely. Right now, as you pointed out, we're listening to three or four males mm -hmm. singing. A few minutes ago, they were fighting. There's intense competition among males right here mm -hmm. for staking out real estate. They're, they're right now setting up their territories. There's lots of competition among males for good territories. And we also know that females prefer to mate with brighter males. Um, also, we know that the coloration of the males influences their interactions with other males. Okay. So there's lots of games that males are playing. Um, their sort of status among males and their, their brightness influences uh, how they interact with other males as well. So to sum up, what we're finding with Lazuli Bunnings is that the males are, are bright for a couple reasons. First of all, the brighter they are, the stronger the signal to establish a territory, let other males know that this is their turf, keep them out and so forth. And also, the brighter the males are, the more chance they have of attracting a female and actually breeding, mating with that female. So Eric, thanks a lot for the time. Oh, you're this welcome. This is great. We learned a lot. Good. Well, thank you, Dick. Right. I'm always happy to share Leslie Bunnings.